Well, hello and welcome to Always the Wild Ones. If it's your first time here, my name is Vanessa Lee. Hello. So today I got, well, actually, no, let's start at the beginning. So yesterday I was at work and I got a surprise um, message um, from a guy that I met at the rare plant market. And anyway, I got a message from him yesterday. It was at work. And he, he was just like, I need your address. Um, I'm sending you something. I was like, oh, and we have been chatting. So I kind of know what's in the box. And yeah, I've got some things that I want to send to him. Um, I do need to pop out and I'll do the boxing for his stuff on this video. But first of all, let's just do this bit and then I'll do the second half, hopefully today. But this is the box and this is how it arrived, saying, Rajal, live plants, at a planty prescription. Ooh, okay, so check that out. I will put all that information in the description because I need to check that out because maybe, no, maybe there's an opportunity to buy some of these beautiful plants. Oh my gosh, he showed me his collection. I, I was blown away. Blown away. The sticker. Very cool. Things. I mean, it's like Christmas, isn't it? <laughs> I think I'm so obsessed with this sort of stuff because I didn't actually have um, I was raised Jehovah's Witness, so I didn't have like like how I went for my birthday, you know, like out of control. So birthdays and Christmas aren't things that you celebrate. Um, Jehovah's Witness. God. Oh. Oh. So yeah, so now I'm just like, you know, this is what I've been missing. Oh my God, I could have had such a crazy time when I was a kid. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I suppose the good thing is that, you know, instead of me expecting gifts from other people, I give gifts to myself. But not, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely not I mean, I can be, I can control myself. Um, I think this is probably the first year where I've just gone a little nuts on my birthday. I do not know why. It's not any special number. Like I haven't hit like a, a milestone or anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to lay it down. Yeah, I don't know what happened to me. What happened to me, hey? Oh, it's got pink paper inside. It's looking so cute. And I'm just hoping that I can pack my things really well. And I need to write a note. And yeah, I just actually can't believe the generosity of this particular person like so that's what we've got so far this beautiful pink paper so pretty oh. Oh. what no what what's going on <sighs> what did you do oh my goodness <laughs> There's three things in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. What? Oh my gosh. What is going on here? Oh my gosh! This is the 
I don't think there is a mess or anything. I'm like, oh God, I love all this tissue paper. I'm keeping that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with this one because this is the one that I was expecting. I think this is the one. Yeah. Oh, she's so cute. <gasps> so it's a little baby and just the most adorable little baby. So I've seen pictures of this plant. It's a little anthurium dark form. Oh, oh there's a little sticker thingy as well. I put a sticker in as well. I love all these little details. Did I say forgetty eye? I don't know what I just said now because my brain is just in an anthurium dream world. Yeah, it's an anthurium dark form. Oh, wow. Now, I mean, that is just the most unusual leaf. Have you ever seen a leaf like that? So with the anthurians, normally you get these kind of like little ears. This one, the forgetii, I think is the only one, apart from the hybrids, of course, the only one that does that. Oh my gosh, and I have one, and it's in sphagnum moss. Oh, this is really clever. Oh, okay, I need to go out and get some of this paper, this kind of paper, um, what is this? Masking tape? Yeah, it's like a masking tape. I need to get some of that. I'll put that on my list. Oh, I think there's a new leaf coming. How did I not notice that? So I will need to ask him where he's been keeping it. I mean, this has probably had the best environment for some reason, I just feel that way, because I had, um, we were just, you know, kind of video, sending videos backwards and forwards at one stage. And he's got some really nice, like, plant cabinets. Like, yeah, quite a few, actually. And, yeah. I don't have the cabinet. Oh, do I feel a trip to Ikea coming on? Because I did see a really nice um, cabinet, like small one, like really affordable. Oh my goodness, she's so cute. Okay, so she's in a mixture actually of bark and sphagnum moss and perlite and I really like that. That was something I was going to do, but I wanted to get a particular type of bark and I don't have it. I've literally run out of everything. Anyway, stop waffling on. Let's move on to the next plant. One last licky. Oh, it's not going to be the last lick, but... Oh! Cute. Cute as can be. Okay, next. Do not know what these are. I'm just... I just can't actually believe it. I really was just expecting one. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to stop saying that. <laughs> and the next one. Oh my goodness, what? What? Oh my gosh, it's a Hoya. <gasps> it looks variegated. It's the Poly... Poly... Cura... Braguette... Now it looks like that fish towel one, but I can't for the life of me remember what it's called. It's probably something, isn't it? But check this out. Come a little bit closer. You can see there's some variegation on there. That is stunning. Oh my goodness. And it's in, it's in this really cool, um, what is this stuff called? Like It's like lava rock, but I think it's their own type of pond. And I didn't grab a bag of that, and now I really wish that I had. 
but I can always go online and buy some of that. Yay, really cute. And what a surprise, much, much appreciated. Another Hoya. And you know I'm a little obsessed with Hoyas as well. I mean, like, this guy is like, really knows me. <laughs> he just got it like on point, you know. Are there holes in the bottom? Oh, there are, okay. Do you know what? I think I'm gonna leave that like that just for now because it's gonna just splash everywhere. Next one, last but certainly not least. Okay, there's tissue on the top, so I can't really sneaky peeky. Let's have a look together. Oh my god, what is this? Ooh, there's a lot going on here. This is an Anthurium baccarai. Seedlings, are loads of them. Oh, spike moss. Look, I've got little, little babies to take care of. Oh, look at them. I just can't believe, I can't believe this. And this is really exciting. This is very exciting. And this is like a, a new area for me. Well, I mean, obviously I have propagated plants before, but not this type of plant. <laughs> uh, not this type of plant. And there's a lot in there. There's a lot going on. So this is gonna be a really fun experiment for me. Two more anthuriums and a Hoya. A really, really good, I mean, a Hoya that I've been looking for is on my list. Um, Polyflora, I think it's called. The one that I was looking for, but this one is a variegated one. This is like a whole other level. So yeah, I hope that, yeah, no, she arrived I mean, they arrive perfectly. Right, I need to get out there. It's a gloomy day. I need to grab my umbrella and um, I'm going to, normally I would look at the weather and try and stay home. But I'm on a mission today. I've got boxes everywhere. I've been trying to find the right size box. But actually the one that he sent me might be the right size. Because I don't want to squash the Hoyas. No, I'm, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you in about five seconds. But for me, it'll be a couple of hours. Hopefully I can finish this day. I'm gonna try. All right, see you in a bit. Hi guys, so I am back. It has actually been about four days. And I don't know, the weather has suddenly just drastically changed from being quite cold to boiling it is boiling here um i think today is 32 outside i'm not sure what it is in here the humidity i've been fighting the humidity um it's extremely low we're dealing with like 35 around 35 today so yes i am not going to be sending the plants um for my plant swap until this heat wave is over because they're Hoyas and I have had an Hoya sent to me in the past during a heat wave and it took a long time for that plant to recover and I don't really want that to happen because it had a couple of the plants are you know quite precious <laughs> anyway so today I really just want to tackle taking care of this little dude and I don't know if you can see but that yellow spot that it had has kind of spread. I'm thinking bacterial. Um, anyway, I want to get this out of this substrate and it had like a new growth coming and that looks like it's kind of dried up. 
which is really sad. I tried putting this in a humidity box and that's when the yellowing kind of started. So we're gonna do that dude. And then I also need to tackle this one. This one I just can't seem to be get I can't seem to get the watering right. So I'm actually gonna put this one, take it out of soil and put it into pond. The roots are looking amazing, but the plant itself is just looking yeah, it's not looking good. So I'm gonna start with this one. And this is quite cool actually because you can see everything where can i put you and then the next problem i have is vessels um i've been looking everywhere i wanted something kind of a bit taller than that but basically this height and this shape but i couldn't find anything so i'm going to be using this cup um i'm not sure i think i'm just going to do a reservoir of Lecker at the bottom. I've just washed these so they're a bit maybe a bit sticky. No, maybe a bit boring. And a nice reservoir, like so. I don't know, it might be a little heavy. Paper in at the bottom, so get them all back in. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm so pleased I'm doing this. So yeah, I'm thinking I haven't really completely worked out what I'm going to put this in. I was going to do a mix of pond and bark. I've never tried anything like that before. I think I just want to check out the root system first. So let's grab a bowl. Got all my bits and bobs ready. Hopefully I've got everything I need. So yeah, let's have a look and see what it's currently in. So if you don't know what this plant is, um, it's a forgetii. It is the dark form. She's looking kind of pale at the moment, but hopefully we can sort that out. Yeah, I think it's like an oh, it's a mix of bark and sphagnum moss. Okay. Oh, the roots look great. Thank God. Yeah, I'm just really pleased that um, I didn't leave this one as long as I did the last plants, batch of plants. my new plants so yeah sphagnum moss is a pain to try and get off this might take a little while so I'll probably just hop through parts of this okay so I think it's probably as good as it's gonna get without me going too crazy so these are the roots and you can actually see like some fresh, fresh new ones right there. Yeah. Yeah, she's looking really good. So I'm going to give this a rinse under the tap and then I will be right back. And we can continue with getting this one. I think I'm going to go pure pond. I don't know if I am confident enough to handle bark in with the pond. Yeah, I'm gonna go pure pond. Okay, so five seconds. Might have to chop some roots off as well. Boop. Okay, so I am back with a nice clean root system. I mean, there still are some bits of sphagnum moss on there. That I couldn't get off for the life of me. 
I wonder if I should soak this in some hydrogen peroxide. Right, this is my hydrogen peroxide spray, but it's all that I have in the house, so it's going to have to do. And it's fairly diluted. I think it's got like a ratio of 20-80 to water, 80 to water. Oh no. Oh, that's better. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to soak in there. A little bit. I might need to top that up with some water. Okay, so that's that dude. Let's move. Move on to the next one. There she is. Yeah, she just keeps spitting out. These yellowing leaves, very frustrating. And I mean, ideally, I'd like to have this one in no drainage as well. The roots are looking fab and it's a shame really that it just doesn't seem to be too happy in soil. So let's give Pon a try and see if that makes any difference. Fingers crossed. And I think I want to go for a slightly chunkier Pon or like a mix maybe because I mean I think this one can handle it oh I really need a better pot oh, this is not good it's not good so check out these roots aren't they looking amazing it's looking fabulous I'm going to go ahead and give this one a rinse. I'm going to have a quick look round for a pot as well. <laughs> for a pot as well. Hmm. Oh, I've got a squarish one. I could use that. Maybe. Okay, I'll be right back. Hi, I'm back. I'm going to leave that one to soak a bit longer. And I found this. Well... Yeah, I've got this. <laughs> Go plant a wash. We do have little bits of soil on there, but I think it'll be okay. I don't know. Should we give it one more rinse? One more rinse. Right. Let's have a look. What can we do here? Yeah, I'm going to try and get off as much as I can, give her a good chance. I'm already feeling quite good about this going into pond because the, the roots just are so noodly and my clarinervium really didn't skip a heartbeat when I put it into pond. We're still getting new leaves and I mean, the plant, the clarinerviums can apparently only give you like, I don't know, two or three leaves a year, where I was getting almost every month some sort of growth. If it wasn't an inflorescent, it would be a leaf. So she's definitely loving it in there. So I'm fairly confident that that will be clean enough. I am a bit of a clean freak, so I am being a bit over the top here. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm driving myself mad. Right. 
this is the vessel. I bought this one from a charity shop. I really love looking around charity shops. Like back in the day, I was always looking at clothes, but I find myself these days looking at glass vessels. to go too deep with the reservoir but it's quite a wide part anyway so so it's got plenty of surface area for the water <laughs> although it doesn't look very deep Right, where's the pond? So, yeah, this is mostly... Oh yeah, I wanted to mix some chunky in, didn't I? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this chunky pond. Quite a large vessel, so. If you don't wash it, then it's like the dust that comes off of the perlite is not good for you. And it just gets everywhere. Yeah, I'll have a look at that. So yeah, just always wash your steel pond because you do not want to be breathing in that dust. I mean, I don't know exactly what would happen to you. But I think any type of dust isn't good, is it? So, yeah. Deceiving. And had I have used this one, I probably would have run out. So I'm going to use a little bit of this actually. There's no perlite with this one. So, like when I clean my pond, this is kind of like reused pond. I, I boil it for about 30 minutes on high. And then all the perlite just floats to the top. And generally I don't, I do reuse the, um, the perlite, but I'll use that in the soil because I don't know why. I just, I just do. A little bit more. Well, that banging sound, um, is from my neighbour. She's obviously having some help. this. I'm liking this. 
Well, I didn't use my coat, but it doesn't really look like she really needs it, to be honest. Which is not exactly central. Maybe I'll just scoop it over. Okay, now she's nicely in the middle. This one's gonna like being in pawn. I really hope so. So I'm just trying, still trying to shake off as much of that sphagnum moss as I can. I can still see bits of sphagnum moss there, but I'm just gonna go with this. Um, there are some roots that look a bit squishy. I'm gonna clean these guys. Where's my cloth? Yeah, I think they're doing some building work. Um, I did notice like um, that my neighbor's, one of his tiles looked a bit loose. And I told management about it ages ago, to be honest. So it's about time that they've come and fixed it. No, where's that bit that I just cut off? Yeah, I mean, some of these secondary roots are probably gonna shed anyway. I'm just going to allow it to go through that process if that's what it wants to do. I'm not going to cut them off, I don't think. Yeah, so of course I've got all my windows open today because it's so hot. So it's going to be a little noisy. Kind of nosy, I want to go and look and see what they're doing. So, I'm going to use the slightly finer one. I'm going to add some perlite again. I think this time I will be using some my phone After giving this plant a little soak, you can see that that new growth is looking quite green. 
Can you see? I'm really pleased with that. So I'll give these a bit of a water and I'm going to be back again. This is going to be like the longest video to record. <laughs> oh, you know, because I'm taking my time about it. But yeah, the next time you will see me, we are going to be packing up those plants. It has to be done. Hi guys, so I am back. The weather has finally calmed down a bit. I think it's about 25 centigrade today. So from 32 down to 25-ish. I'm gonna go ahead and pack this up, get it sent off today, and then it will arrive tomorrow in the kind of lower temperature. I'm getting this Hoya Parasitica Black Margin because it is full of peduncles. I mean, she's tiny, but she's got this massive peduncle here. And if you look really close, it looks like she's getting ready to bloom again. And then there's another one there, like a small one. And I just noticed she's just produced another one. So let me show you that dude, just there. It's stinky, but it also looks like it's getting ready to bloom. So I need to be very careful. And I, you know, once it does bloom, then that's like another couple of weeks. I don't want to have to keep waiting because, I mean, I don't know what this weather is going to do next. So I'm going to pack this one up first. I've got a load of this fluffy stuff. I don't know how I'm going to use that. Um, I did go out and I found some of this brown tape, so that's really cool. I've got a pile of boxes behind me and I also have like just a box of, I don't know, like board and stuff. So I've got quite a lot of this, but I've also got another rule of that. I've got lots of padding and paper. I might need to use some of that bubble wrap. And I'm definitely going to be using these. And then, yeah, then I just have to find the right size box. So, I don't know. We'll just have to see. <laughs> right. I mean, she's quite, she's actually going to be quite difficult to pack. What was the other thing that was concerning me? Okay, so she's in Pon. I will be sending her exactly as it is, basically, in Pon in this cup. I might put some plastic in there to stop the Pon from rattling around. I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Okay. No, I don't need that. <laughs> Stick that upside down so that I know not to use it. Scissors. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is try and cut some bubble wrap. Like kind of cut a round circle of this. And then I'll go over with that. Yeah. So hopefully this works out. Okay, so let's lift this up so you can see what I'm doing. Ah! Oh my gosh. I'm actually quite nervous doing this because it's just the weather is just, I don't know. I'm really concerned about it blooming. I don't think it'll bloom in the box because it'll be dark, but I just hope it doesn't have bought the bloom. And I've recently had this plant in the kitchen in lower light purposely, but then it still went ahead and bloomed. I knew it was going to bloom because um, of this time of the year. Okay, that's kind of a round circle. Oh, it's like a heart. Yay. So yeah, and now I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna cut down the centre a little bit. I should 
actually, I wonder if I should put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. I think you can see from there. I really wish I had someone to hold this up for me. Maybe I'll put it back in the glass for now. Just so it doesn't topple over. Yeah, so I want this under. What was I saying? Um, oh, and there's loads of new leaves on this as well. So yeah, I put it on my northwest facing window in the kitchen. Yeah, that's me. And she just continued growing and has not skipped a heartbeat. So I'm guessing this is a really, really easy hoya to take care of. And I'm just so pleased that it's going to arrive um, with hopefully, hopefully a bloom so so nice if that just he opens the box and then the next day it blooms i'd be really really happy with that so i'm definitely doing next day delivery with this don't want to take any risks okay i don't know if i can do much better than that right so i'm going to cut some of these strips this stuff is brilliant i've already used it um i've been packing up my home actually because i've got some building work that i need to have done before winter. Um, yeah. So that's been kind of quite stressful, like thinking where are all these plants gonna go? And how are they gonna cope? I did go to Ikea and I bought um, I bought another clear box so that I can put as many plants into boxes. Mostly the Hoyas will be going into that box. I might have to go and get another one. And then there's like, oh, I've just got so much stuff I want to do. There's some plants that I actually want to chop up um, and just start again. But I'll probably just do an update video. I hope you can see, I might actually, Okay, so yeah, I'm going to put this tape on. Side. Oh my God, that didn't work. It just stuck. Oh my God. So yeah, during that heat, a lot of my plants suffered. And I've already cut up my pink princess, but I'll put that in the, I'll show you that in the updates. Okay, so far so good. So I've kind of just taped around the back. Why is it the jungle? Oh my gosh, it's all kicking off here. I already just, oh, I hope it's Good idea. Oh my gosh. There's just so much going on over here. So, okay. I need to lift it up. Try and get this bit in. It's not working as well as I thought it was going to. Oh, hang on. Yeah, that's better. Oh, it's a tricky little number. Okay. Hopefully the worst that will happen is that a leaf might get broken. But it's all about the dangles. Luckily there's more than one on this plant, but that large one can make it. I'll be very happy. Okay. She's stuck to the floor. So I'm actually meant to be at work today. I took the day off. Because I had a bit of a crazy family crisis on 
Saturday evening. And I hadn't slept. I was just, you know, up worried and should I put some on the top as well? Yeah, I was up and I was just worried. I couldn't sleep. I was oh my anxiety was through the roof. Everything's fine now. But it did mean that my Sunday video was out late, so I apologise for that. But yeah, it was just completely out of the blue. Um, and yeah, that was just my priority was making sure that my daughter was okay and that I was just on the phone, you know, that, that my phone was available. I didn't really want to be like thinking about anything else. If I'm still feeling, I mean, I'm obviously relieved that everything went well, but I am still feeling a bit like exhausted from that whole emotional um, outlet of energy. You don't realise that, I mean, it was like running a marathon. Okay. Oh, I think it's done. Okay, now the really tricky bit. So I'm just going to lay her down here. This gets easier with practice. Some sort of device for that would be handy. Instead of using my teeth. Don't do what I do. You know, get yourself a friend to help you. <laughs> or, or cut it before. some fluff in there. Would you do fluff? I could put some fluff. I mean, there's no reason why not. Just at the top bit. Actually then I don't really need that. So I'll just go straight in with the tape. I think I'll start cutting that one. Okay, that was definitely the more difficult of the three. And I was hoping to send another plant, but I just can't find the right size box for it. So maybe I'll send that at a later stage on its own. I still want it to be able to breathe, so I'm actually not 
covering it completely. Okay, that's it. First one is done. Yay. Next. Pile of mess down here. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm going to do these two, but I'm going to actually take them out of the soil. And put them in, I'm going to put like the roots into a bag of sphagnum moss and just take them into the box. So yeah, I'm sending another Hoya. This is a Crimson Queen. And I know it, it, it's not rare, there's nothing unusual. I mean, like you can find this plant fairly easily. But it blooms all the time. I mean, I have several. And um, well, actually, no, the, the largest of my um, Crimson Queens blooms all the time. It's just nuts. Um, and I've noticed that this one has just pushed out of the dongle. Where is it? Well, I think it's a pedungle. I should have showed you that before doing the whole dirty stuff. Can you see it? Are you there? <laughs> you can't see it. You know what? I'll zoom in. But it's, yeah, it's right there near my thumb. So that's exciting. And yeah, it's, it's doing really well. It's also been living in the kitchen. And in quite a low light. She's very pretty. And yeah, and she's loving this soil she does not want to come out of it <laughs> i'm just going to do this very gently 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 don't want to mess up any beautiful roots it's actually quite a chunky aeroid mix like there's mostly bark pumice and but oh some sphagnum moss and very little cocoa coral like I really went super chunky with this one I just wanted to test out I just wanted to test out different um substrates so I've got some of this plant in pond I have some that's in like a uh, cocoa core um perlite miss you know a basic kind of aeroid or well, my basic aeroid mix um but i think it's more it's i definitely got more cocoa core than all the other sub like substrates Ooh, yeah, that can go. and yeah they're, they're all doing really well. Like I can't say that one's doing better than the other, which was kind of the reason why I did it. It was just to see if one would grow faster or no, they're all exactly the same. <laughs> um, obviously the mother plant is a lot, a lot bigger, but, and so because she's, because she's more mature, I think that's why, um, She's flowered so much. She's just recently flowered again. Um, she flowered in the spring just once. Did she actually? No, she didn't. It was kind of halfway through summer. Yeah, she did like her first, well, first one of this year. Like I think around, around my birthday time, like August. Maybe July, and now she's blooming. She has a bloom right now, and she has a new pedungle, and she also has another pedungle that I can see is getting ready to bloom. Okay, I'm not going to do much more than that. So what's left on there currently is great is some sphagnum moss and a bit of orchid bark. Stick some of that in there. Put her in. 
Pixie bag. I mean, the bag is kind of a little bit too full, really. So I'm going to roll it over. And then I'm just going to tape it. Okay, and then I'm just going to sellotape around that. Which, of course, I should have cut the sellotape first. Right, that's that one. <laughs> Just chuck them down, Vanessa. Voila. Let me just need to get the top bit to go in. Luckily, she's quite soft. fluffy stuff. Another one done. Brilliant. 
tape on the top. Not that it really needs it, to be honest. Because they're going to be quite snug in that box. Maybe a little bit of an air vent. Done. So yeah, let's take that out. Check out the little root system. Oh, you're so cute and dinky. Oh, what do I do? Oh no, did I just break something? Just cleaning it up a little bit. Take that sheath off. So yeah, her little root system is very cute. That will definitely go in the smaller bag. And this is actually just cocoa core and perline that is in. Nothing amazing. You put some sphagnum moss in the bag. You want to take a little bit of that out. So I can shove it down the sides. Snug, snug, snug. Really cute. I'm happy with that. Just a little bit more. Okay. Just need some tape. I've got another one. Well, I've actually got quite a few. Yeah, it pucks all the time. You can see like it's already pucked again. So yeah, happy little baby. She is very happy. Now, yeah, I need to be careful with this one. I don't want to snap it. So I'm gonna do it on its side again like that.
I'm actually going to put that one in first. And then I do feel that these are maybe a little too snug. But... hope and pray that they arrive happy. I really hope this blooms. I'm very excited. So the box is done, the plants are in and I actually just want to put in this like dimple something. Okay so on the box I have written instructions. So here I've written live plant, keep this way up, fragile. And I've done that all the way around, of course. And on the other side. Now I just need to tape it up. I've basically booked a DHL and yeah, it's on its way. So it has been two days, um, the day that, five seconds ago for you, <laughs> the day that I had just boxed everything up, I took the package off to the DHL drop-off depot and my barcode wouldn't work. So brought the plants back, unpacked them. Um, the payment was pending, but then the following day, the payment went through, so I thought, great, the barcode should work. But no, got to the depot again and the barcode didn't work. And I mean, this is just so frustrating because um, DHL's customer services only deals with the package once it's been picked up and delivered. So it's for the person who is receiving the package. There is nowhere in the customer service team or list for people that have tried to send something and haven't actually got to the stage they've paid but they haven't got to the stage where the parcel has been collected so that was oh my god it was so stressful um the post office was directly across the road so i just decided oh you know what i'm even though i'm now spending more money i'm just going to drop it off at the post office and I did the next day delivery. I received a, well, I tracked the parcel this morning. It arrived at 10.30 and yeah, I'm just really pleased that finally the parcel has arrived and those plants are there and that plant will get the chance to bloom in Carl's home. I do wanna say thank you again. If you are watching Carl, thank you so much. It means a great deal to me. I can't believe that I have a little forgetty eye. And the other two plants, the Hoya and the other um, Anthuriums, the seedlings, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's gonna happen with those guys. But, oh my gosh, never again DHL, I'm sorry, but that was just very stressful for absolutely no reason and when you book something for next day delivery you actually expect to be sending the package and it to be delivered the following day not i mean i sent several even emails no response anyway i'm gonna stop moaning and um i will most definitely give you some updates so my next video probably will be updates because i have so many good things to tell you. So many good things have happened. Oh my gosh. 
but yeah you have to have to wait <laughs> have to wait until the next video so if you did enjoy this video please do give me a thumbs up it helps me out great greatly with the algorithm and if it's your first time here and you haven't subscribed go ahead and do that since you have stayed until the end i'm guessing that you did enjoy it you did have a fabulous week and i will see you very soon until then bye